So three, two, one. All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Dishonored. A little old speed run for you of uh, what category am I doing? Oh yeah, any percent? Yes. Uh, yeah. Guess I'm just good to go. So uh, on go in three, two, one, go. So yeah, this is the uh, the prologue. We're after a <laughs> flying start, immediately going into the water several times. Hell yeah. <laughs> what we're supposed to do there is like do a little vault on the flag, but I messed it up like three times in a row, but it's all good. In here, don't worry about it. We're gonna do some elevators. Uh, climb into the sky, climb on a roof, jump over some triggers. It's all good. You know how it goes. It was like a little cutscene with the child on the bridge where you should want to like go and play hide and seek with you, but you just completely skip that more or less. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do that like a couple of times throughout the run. Like the the way that I climbed that roof, so it's called an elevator, which is essentially the way that a lot of walls, especially invisible walls, like how they work in this game, they're kind of stacked like Legos. So how you would normally in the game you would vault over a single like block, like a little wall, for example. Um, but in the case of invisible walls, that's just a ton of those small walls just stacked on top of each other. So you can essentially just do one massive continuous vault up into the air, which allows you just like climb on top of really tall buildings. And as you're about to see here in a second, uh -oh. we're gonna get in ourselves into this little corner here, and then just oh, oh. hello. 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 There we go. And fly up into space. And now we're here. So we're standing on top of an invisible wall because we just did like a massive multi vault all the way to the top here. You have a, a nice view of this very depressing gray British looking scenery. Uh, the reason why we're actually up here to begin with is because we're waiting for those assassins down there to spawn. Because in a second, a fight is going to start. And when that fight starts, you want to um, essentially lose it as quickly as possible. Because when you lose that fight, uh, the game is essentially, oh no, this guy sucks. Let's just end the fight to make him win automatically. So if I didn't jump off there and like take what would normally be lethal damage, I would have to like fight some spooky assassin men, like these guys right here. And there he goes. So yeah, there's some cutscene here in the beginning. Uh, Empress dies. Very sad. Corvo, it's all coming apart. Yeah. Fine. Oh yeah. Find Emily. Good. Uh, Protect good her. time to mention. I'm gonna do a Only sick one. trick here in a second, which is called a uh, Ari's to... save storage or AS Corvo. for short, uh, which essentially just means that you hold down F uh, during a cutscene, which will then sort of pre-hold yes, the skip cutscene button the next time you enter a cutscene. So the next time you would enter a cutscene that you can skip, it would instantly skip it rather than do like a little two second like buffer before then skipping. So yeah, good old holding F for like several minutes. But yeah, that was the prologue right there. Very exciting. <clears throat> this is where we get like thrown into prison because uh, like your girlfriend dies, the the queen. Uh, there, skip the cutscene. Like, I guess you can spot that if you're like awake, but you just hold F there, skip the cutscene, save like one and a half seconds. This meal comes from a friend. Yeah. But if I sound really tired, it's because I just came home from work like oh, an hour ago. I just ate like a one of those freezer pizzas. Five minutes ago, gorged it in while I was listening to uh, Zuketra play Roblox on my second monitor. Oh yeah, we're escaping prison, by the way. Uh, <laughs> what I just did there is I lined myself up with the uh, the wall, which allows me to vault on top of the gate really precisely, so I can sort of just phase through a gate, and then on the other side of the gate, you do one of those elevators again to just reach the uh, the top of the uh, the prison where there's just no ceiling, so you can just kind of climb through. And then yeah, you just escape prison and you enter the sewer. Also, you'll probably see me do it a couple times throughout the run, but you can do these little 
vaults over objects, which give you like a tiny speed boost, which is ever so slightly faster than just running in a straight line. So I might take like a slightly off path sometimes just to get those ever so slightly tiny vaults, like right here, for example. Never mind, I got, I got caught on the thing. But here we're out of bounds because we use one of those elevators again from earlier. Uh, the reason why we're out of bounds here is a little bit further ahead in this like sewer system, uh, you would normally pick up a uh, a crossbow and your sword, which you would usually in the casual game use to like assassinate people with and stuff. But it's actually possible to skip it, so you don't have it at all throughout the speed run. Now. To sort of combat that, because we still need to assassinate a bunch of people, we'll be picking up some items later down the line. So I think it's like right below us here, like down in this tunnel, that's where you would normally pick up the uh, the sword and the crossbow, but we're just completely bypassing that right now. Also, we're getting past that guy. Wait, this was actually found like... Like, actually five, six years ago, but they didn't come up with any like good strats with it or anything, because people couldn't find out a good way to get back inbounds again. But then, uh, like a year ago, some Australian madman just came in with like 200 hours in the game and just completely took every record and broke the game in half. Though you fucking mad cunt. Yeah, that was the sewer level. This is our good boy Samuel. We'll be seeing a lot of him throughout this run. He's like the boat man. I think that's quite literally his title if you look at the, uh, the mission objective thing it just says Samuel the Boatman. <clears throat> well, yeah, what we're going to be doing is ah, I just <laughs> I just hit my hand on my lamp. Okay. What we're going to do <laughs> instead of killing people with swords and crossbows, we're gonna next time we go to a shop, we're gonna buy a bunch of supplies. We're gonna buy some grenades and some spring razors, and most importantly, a whole bunch of mana potions. Uh, the spring razors and the grenades, as you can probably guess, are to murder people. Uh, but the mana potions are actually really important, because our main form of movement tech in this game is from blinking. Just like rapid fire or right clicking with your magical blink ability, which we're going to unlock here in a, in a moment. There's going to be some cutscenes first. But yeah, blinking takes up mana, so to use our blink as quickly as possible and as often as possible, we have to stock up on mana. Which also means throughout the run we'll be taking very minor detours just to pick up some mana potions here and there. Also, I'm getting some really weird freezes right now. We can continue this later. But here, I'm gonna try to hold F again to do another ass. There we go. See, instantly skip that cutscene because I sort of pre-held it. Pre-held ass. Perfect. All right. Here, there's a sick trick incoming. If you're a, a prime gamer specimen, you probably have yourself a Logitech G502. Uh, the reason why you really want one of those mice is because it has an infinite scrolling mouse wheel. Meaning, right here, I just sort of start scrolling really hard with my mouse. So when I load into the next level, it's just gonna phase me through the ceiling. So right here, bam, you're in your bed, you're in your bed, boom, you're up, you're up here now. So we're guys just now like one floor above where we usually would be. Yeah, now we have blink. Now we're just gonna spam blink most of the time and then occasionally like look down and pick up some mana potions. All right, got there. <clears throat> Getting that mana potion is kind of weird because you sort of enter a cutscene trigger right as you go to pick it up. So if you don't pick it up in time, you just get locked in a cutscene. Yeah, that was the dream. We're gonna pick up some more of these runes throughout the run. We're gonna unlock some more, like, smaller abilities. There's one that allows you to double jump, and one that allows you to sprint faster, and one that allows you to blink a little bit further, which is... Yeah, you guessed it, pretty fast. Oh, oh, big note here. The reason why this category is called 80% yes and there's also a different one called Any Percent No, because of these items here that I'm picking up now. Whoa. Okay, I got another freeze there, that was weird. But these items are actually from a DLC, and it was just sort of agreed upon in the community that everybody could use these. So, I think they're called the 
Void Walker's Arsenal, if I remember correctly, but it essentially just spawns a couple of extra pouches of coins and some bone charms inside your room in that level that you can then pick up to use. Now what that does is, is not only does it give us a whole bunch of money that we can use for mana potions, like right off the bat, it also gives us a, um, a bone charm called Void Channel, which ever so slightly buffs all of your abilities, I believe. Um, but the main reason why we want it is because it ever so slightly buffs our blink ability, meaning we can blink just a little bit further, allowing us to go some more places than uh, we normally wouldn't be able to. Be a rough trip. But yeah, that was the shopping you just saw. I bought like a rune, some ton of mana potions, some uh, <coughs> grenades, some um, spring razors and stuff. Spring razors are essentially just little trip mines that will just like, explode and throw metal everywhere. Uh, which is how we're going to assassinate the next guy. It's a guy called Campbell. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Samuel starts talking to you about a whole bunch of like NPCs, because in this game you're normally supposed to be able to like, go and do a bunch of side quests, side missions where you help out some other characters, because there's sort of a different outcome you can do to every mission that is a non-lethal version. Um, and I think for this one you're supposed to like do something for uh, for Granny Rag. You can also assassinate Campbell by not killing him, but like by branding him with some I don't know symbol on his face that makes him very sad. So he can't be a cop anymore. But yeah, we're gonna break into the building. Oh, almost fall off the edge. That was scary. Jesus. And we're going to do a trick here called a slip clip, which is essentially what I just did right there, which is leaning as you sprint sideways into a door and then you flick your mouse, which just allows you to stick your head through a wall for just a millisecond, just enough to be able to just peek on the other side and blink through the wall. All right, here we're going to do another trick called a damage cancel, where I'm going to try to fall here. All right, never mind, didn't do it. Don't worry about it. On the way I hear it. Um, the damage cancel essentially is... If you fall off of a roof at a certain distance, you'll get a hard fall, which is where you enter a little animation of, you know, like landing on your knees and going, ugh, I have landed. But if you get a hard fall, um, it's sort of an animation list thing that happens. Like you land on your feet and you take just a tiny amount of damage and then no animation. Um, but if you then fall even further than that, then you do get an animation still. And then you take damage on top of it. So it's like a very weird little sweet spot where if you drop from too high of a height, you get an animation and take damage. If you don't fall far enough, you'll get an animation and take no damage. But if you just hit the sweet spot between them, then you fall, take barely any damage, and you get no animation. And you can just continue instantly. Oh yeah. Uh... I guess a note. I tried to do a skip at the very end of that last level where you um, you blink down in front of Samuel uh, at the end of that last level, and when you do that, you reduce your FPS to five, and then you sort of spam inputs on him without spamming too hard, because then if you talk to him at the correct timing, that will allow you to just completely skip his uh, his dialogue for that entry or sorry exit level. So then he usually goes, oh, wow, you did it. You killed the man. How very sad a man had to die. But he was evil. You know, he gives, like, a, the moral talk. Uh, Corvo. But you can skip that. Here, you just went down to the boat. That was, like, a slightly larger intermission level. I think between every mission, there's always these small little intermission levels where you go to your little base, you can buy some upgrades, you can talk to people. Look at naked ladies in baths and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this one's a little bit longer because you need to go down into a sewer and take care of some uh, zombie weebs. Uh, make them commit not live and then that allows you to continue. You're just not allowed to uh, continue the story before then. Them two Pendletons are there, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of guards. Slack Someone just messaged me on Battle.net. Get inside the cat if he don't kill you. <laughs> I don't think I turned off Battle.net. 
He and well, Bottle Street gang hole up at the old Dunwall. Nobody spam me, please. I beg you. They sell the elixir that can't really alt tab this game, it just freezes. I'll lay low, but keep an eye out for you and a little later. Uh, well, yeah, this is the next level. This is, um, I know Emily must uh, the Golden Cat. This is like the brothel level that I think was in the trailers from this game when it like originally came out. Uh, where you have to kill two guys, which is like the Pendleton twins. Uh, interesting tidbit about this level is there's sort of a 50-50 RNG chance of what RNG outcome you have. Um, which is determined when you enter this level that I'm in right now. So right now, an RNG has been set, and I don't know which one until I enter the brothel and look at a specific light. So I'm going to talk to Emily here. We're going to clip through this gate, and then... Oh, we got good luck. The way I can see that is on those red lights on the uh, the wall right there. Those sort of, I think, indicate if there's people in these uh, rooms. And the penalties that you want to kill are always in those rooms. Where the lights are on. So it's essentially as you clip that through that wall, you can just uh, instantly tell if you got good luck or bad luck. Now, in the past, getting bad luck was actually considered pretty slow, but with a bunch of like updated route shit, you can uh, and now get bad luck, and it still won't be a time loss because you're waiting for this child to get in position. You sort of free her from her little, I don't know, penthouse prison in the attic. Um, and then she runs to the exit, and as long as you just kill the two Pendletons and make it down to her before she makes it to the exit, then you're good. Are you both ready to go? Then it's essentially just an auto scroll at that point. Oh, you must have worked wonders out there. Yeah, that was the uh, can't believe my old eyes. end of the level. Kill the two Pendleton boys. One thing that would really suck on that level is you, <laughs> if you don't kill the Pendletons. Which I, now that I think about it, I didn't even remember to check if I did that or not, so... <laughs> Very good, I did not mess up. I'm not one to speak against my betters, mind you. Alright, time to get comfy though. This is a three minute long cutscene right here. What? Oh, it's perfect for some donations. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, uh... Oh, yeah. So, we've got ten dollars from Covert Muffin. Uh, saying, good luck, good luck, have fun with the run, Crowbax, and may, your, may you honor the dishes. Thank I you, you good-looking food-eating man. The dish, dish <laughs> honor. Uh, then Sachiki also sent ten dollars and said, "If you're not going to be watching the upcoming relay race, I will be. I'll send Hainki to suplex you." <laughs> That's a scary thought. I'll put it on my car when I drive Don't home. Emily, I'm Callista. I'll be caring yeah. for you and schooling you while you're with us. You got any more? Pleased to meet you. No, As that was just the two, so uh, have like fun with the rest the of the cutscene. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I did kind of just drive here just to do Hackathon, because I was visiting my parents this weekend, and uh, they live like an hour and a half away, because I had to uh, to go to work, and my workplace is pretty close to where my parents live. So I drove there yesterday, went to work this morning, then drove like an hour and a half after work to get to my apartment where my PC is, so I could do this. And then, pretty much like five minutes after this is done, I'm just gonna go home again. <laughs> just nice three hours of driving to sit here for 40 minutes. But hey, it's for heck, so it's always worth. I'll take any excuse to talk to my homies and do speedrunning. Alright, so, cutscene over. Now we go do more blinking, which is spamming more right click. Uh, yeah. More cutscenes. <laughs> this is a great later. speed game, by the way, because if you can't tell already, this game is... I think someone did the math at some point. It's like 17 minutes of cutscene and like 14 minutes of actual gameplay. <laughs> Most of the speedrun is just actually watching cutscenes. But hey, you know why that's really, really good? That means you can do what I'm doing right now, just drink water and just talk about random stuff. Even better, you can like go to the bathroom and get tea. Years, but you lived in Dunwall Tower with the late Empress, so maybe you haven't visited the bridge before tonight. Something to look out for. See all them lights on the water? That's right, we'll be spotted for sure. You're gonna have to shut off their power before I can pick you up. I guess one thing you can point out on this level, I mean this is one of those uh, get from point A to point B kind of levels where you start right here, you have to go past that bridge in the horizon, and you have to like kidnap a man. Uh, we're not allowed to kill him because he's very smart, uh, so we have to sort of knock him out. Where in the past, you would use the sleep darts with that crossbow that you're supposed to have at this point. Oh, dude, what are these, what is this lag, bro? 
dude, it's like playing, like playing CS and just fucking lagging all the time. Uh, but yeah, so instead of using the, um, the sleep darts on him, I'm just gonna knock him out, like choking him out. I'm gonna try to not die here. Okay, that's, that's kind of bad. Okay, our mana route is a little bit fucked up. The thing about the mana route in this game is it's actually become so optimized and sort of well made that even messing up a little bit can mess up your mana route completely so your blinks will be sort of out of order. Because optimally you want to finish every level with zero mana left because at the beginning of every level your mana bar is completely filled up again. So you want to sort of maximize all of your mana usage. So yeah, I'm just like... I'm currently considering where I could uh, just not do two blinks because I just messed up twice. All right, this is a man. We're gonna just jump out the window with him. I think I'm just gonna wait here. Just walk. There we go. I think that should be fine. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> Isn't the relay after this, by the way? Like the, uh, the JKA? I think it is, yeah, actually. All you should definitely go watch the JKA relay. It's very good, and there's gonna be some very interesting and good looking men participating. And I can't wait. But from what I hear, he's woken up worse places. Guess we all have at that. Their ass coming up here. I'm gonna roll up to our boys here. Hold an F. We're just gonna instantly skip this cutscene. Boom. Corvo, wake up! You were making funny faces while you were sleeping. Jesus, I did not get enough sleep. I was I was chugging coffee at work. I think I drank like told me if there's ever trouble I should always run here. Probably like two coffee pots all by myself. You're part of this. I just had one of those days, you know, like right before work where you're just sort of laying there in bed, just anticipating having to go to work like really early in the morning. Actually no scratch that. I was so excited for hackathon that I just couldn't sleep. You know? So excited to participate here. See my homies again. It's the best. Oh well, yeah. My blood is straight coffee, but I'm think I think I'm coming down from like my caffeine high. At like the worst time. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is an interesting level. Good level. Uh, actually, no, not good level, but interesting. Because this level, we have to go assassinate Lady Boyle. Only problem is she has two sisters that are like identical to her. That are all dressed up in costumes. And in the speedrun, they're all randomized every time you enter this level. So you can never have a sort of consistent route for this. So there's essentially three different outcomes. Which boils down to two outcomes. Because it essentially just means you always go for the one that's the closest. Because when I run through this door, there's going to be one boil immediately to my left here. So we're just going to insta-gib her. Bang, she's dead. And we're just going to pray that it's her. But it was not. So if you see the quest marker to kill that boil, that means that the boil we just killed was the wrong boil. But this boil might not necessarily be the correct boil, even though she has a quest marker about being a boil. So we're just gonna, at that point, just run around and kill all the other boils, because if no boils are alive, we're then on. by just <laughs> elimination, we're just gonna go through all of them. So, optimally, you would want the uh, the first boil you kill to be the correct one, but evening, sir. sadly that wasn't the case. Quickly. But yeah, getting good RNG there only happens like 33% of the time, and is about, I think it's 14 seconds faster. And there's different ways you can go about it. There's a strat where you can sort of reset the RNG every time you enter the level. Because the the RNG for which boil is the correct one is set 
like two seconds after you enter the mansion. So what you'll do is you're just gonna spam load the autosave um, from when you enter the mansion until you get the RNG that you need. Because you can sort of look on a, uh, or at a painting inside the room and that'll tell you whether that was the good one or the bad one. Which means they're essentially just standing, reloading over and over and over again until you just happen to get the uh, the RNG that you need, which can either you know be instantly or it could take a couple of tries. But I think I'll I'll spare you the, the pain of having to watch load screens and I'll just do the uh, bad RNG because it's only like 14 seconds slower anyways, right? That's not too bad. And Martin have already cooked up something more the only annoying thing about that level like is when you're going through the uh, through the exit. On bad RNG, you have to like run past some music men, and the music uh, harmonica men will take your mana away, take away your Gatorade, so you can't go anywhere. To face the Lord Regent, about time we took care of my say. Long past time. Oh my. Also, if you're wondering what the hell's going on in the story at this point, um, I'm probably the wrong one to tell you what's going on in the story, because it was only like a couple weeks ago where I realized that this, that level is where the prologue is, and that building right there is the prison level. I did not know that, and I have like several hundreds of hours in this game. I just assumed it was a completely different place. Crazy if you ask me. Also, there's the bridge from the level earlier, and like out there there's a lighthouse. Is where the like last level is. Spoiler alert. Announcements come from. Might be worth looking into. Wait, now we're gonna go kill um, a bald man. Uh, we're gonna first jump into his castle and then spook him by breaking some of his windows, and then we're gonna chuck a nade at his window, and we're just gonna try to see if we can snipe him. Oh, dude, this lag! What is happening? I'm getting like these weird freezes every once in a while. I don't know if you can see them on stream though. So we're gonna blink here, blink, grab mana potion. I'm stuck. Avoid the rocket tower. We're gonna grab that nade and go in here. Then we're gonna instantly equip pistol, shoot the window, grab mana potion, and leave. Now that what this does is it spooks the bald man. So he's gonna run up to the top in his penthouse here. So now he's in a different spot. So we're gonna line ourselves up here, look there, throw there, that hopefully should kill him. It did not kill him, never mind. The way I know that is there's gonna be a little prompt up in the top right that tells you if you actually killed the man or not, but it's fine. We have an autosave that's right here, so it's not too bad. Oh, elevator, hello, there we go. Oh yeah, a quick thing to mention uh, about these elevators that I've been doing here and there, they're all completely FPS dependent. He didn't die again? Hello? What? Oh my god. But yeah, the elevator is here. Like this one that I'm doing here. Those are FPS dependent, so the higher FPS you have, the, the better and the faster the elevator is going to be. Which is usually why in the community we just have like a guide on how to set your game to absolute potato settings, so everybody's running at the same like garbo quality. Dude, the freeze happened again. Did you see that? Is it all done? You're ready to go back to the house. Man, <laughs> what even was that level? Oh. All right, let's go. Yeah, we killed him. Killed the bald man. Uh, and for this level, this is the sort of quote unquote end level of the. Big changes. I don't even know what to call it. To Something's gonna happen. Some story Why stuff's gonna happen. Because you killed the evil men and we're now really happy because now we can make your uh, the little girl the queen and everything's gonna be good. Uh, but in a second, our inventory is gonna get wiped away. Which means optimally we want to finish that last level by using our mass or last mana potion to sort of just be completely optimal. Obviously, something, sometimes things go wrong. You have to use an extra mana potion like we did earlier in the game. Like where I messed up and did two extra blinks that was necessary. But yeah, optimally you want to be completely out of mana at this point. We're just going to do a couple of last blinks here. I'm holding F to do a cutscene skip here. Instantly continuing to hold F, not moving to line myself up. Jump there, bang. Blink there, boom. And see, now we're out of mana. And now we're just going to enter this cutscene. 
which is just going to completely wipe our inventory. Also, peak strat right here is that I'm going to be holding F for the next like two and a half minutes to save a second and a half from now. So yeah, big cutscene. So if you have any donations or anything, that would be a good time. All right. This is the one who was with the Empress when she died. All right, Heg I guess Heggy hey, just left me. Tivian stuff. That's Add fine. It to your work. He'll live. That's up to Dowd. I guess I could talk about what's happening here. Uh. The, the men that were your friends earlier were actually not your friends, and as you killed the last man, uh, they like betray you and poison you, but Samuel, the boatman, he's your homie, so he didn't like giga poison you, he only like medium poison you, so you're a little sleepy and you're a little tired, but you don't die from it right now. And then these assassin boys are like, damn, this guy's not super dead, so they just take you prisoner. Uh, and yeah, you're then gonna, after this level's finished, we're gonna break out of their scuffed jail and take revenge. I think you can, like, kill all these guys. This guy especially. This guy's Dowd. She's like the super assassin man. I think you can play as him in one of the DLCs. A gift from your friend. The one who talks to you in the dark. Oh yeah, I just realized I think talks I turned the music you off. Visit his shrines. <laughs> I visited those shrines Normally too. there's like ominous and music playing at this like point, but I think I turned it off just so I could listen to but I don't know you. the indie soundtrack on the Twitch soundtrack app. If any of you guys have ever streamed You're or used the Twitch soundtrack thing that you can use to that. avoid being DMCA'd on Twitch, that shit's so stupid. You can still get fucking DMCA'd and get your VODs muted even though you're playing all your music purely through the fucking Twitch soundtrack thing. Like, one of my mods got- or VODs got completely muted because of it. It was the silliest thing. Also, I'm pretty sure it, like, corrupted all my audio drivers. Because after I downloaded the program, it, like, reset my PC. My OBS would no longer recognize my desktop audio. It was like it just didn't exist. And only Twitch soundtrack existed, and not even that played. So I couldn't really stream any games with sound or even listen to music until I had not only uninstalled Twitch soundtrack, but it had like corrupted my OBS to the point where, um, whoa, to the point where I had to uninstall my OBS and I had to delete all my user settings, all my scenes and everything for streaming. So I had to redo all of them. Really because I just wanted to listen to DMCA free music, but no. Also, did you see that earlier? I did like a blink. That, uh... Kind of like that one, where I got robbed of my mana. Because I tried to blink, but it, uh... The game like froze a little bit, lagged. But I didn't go through the wall. Oh yeah, by the way, we're... This, we just escaped like prison jail. Or like sewer jail and we spared doubt in case you missed that you're normally supposed to like go through a level where there's like a bunch of assassin men you go to Dowd's headquarters and then you have to like fight him or not fight him in case you want to be a sneaky boy but we're just kind of going through here we did like a out of bounds clip and then we did some like water swimming which we're gonna do here we're right there. I essentially just reduced my FPS to 5 as I jumped into that water, which will just transport you to the end. And here, we just did the flooded level. There's a lot of, like, weird new FPS tricks. I think... I don't remember who it was. I think it was Lurvin or Sarah who told me, like, one time that it was... They weren't really sure if they wanted to allow FPS tricks or not in this game until Vo, the Australian mad cunt, just one day decided to install the game and just add a whole bunch of FPS keybinds to his config and then he got a world record with it and then everybody just kind of agreed like, oh yeah, 
I guess you're allowed to have FPS binds now. Because this guy got world recce with them. But yeah. Here we're going to reunite with our, our boy Samuel. We're going to do a trademarked strat here called Finzi's Fast Fade Out. Which is essentially where you talk to him. You fall in the water to like cut his dialogue short, then you blink back into his dialogue, and then you quick save, and then load that quick save, which will then load you in a save where his dialogue is just about to finish, and you'll just exit the level. Saves like half a second or something. Wow. Knowing them, they're not giving up without a fight. Right, but this is the uh Last level of the run. This is the lighthouse where you have to go save the child and kill the men that were your friends but not your friends. So yeah. All I can say is it has been a pleasure serving with you. Maybe after all this is settled, we'll see each other again. So I want you all to say. Good luck, Goodbye to our good friend Samuel Anyone the Boatman. You do. He's been our great companion throughout this entire journey. Give my best to Emma. May he rest in peace. I don't think he like even canonically like lives through this game. I think there's something about the lore where, according to the deep lore, the game always finishes on like high chaos or something. Where you essentially just kill everybody. Oh yeah, uh, time coming up soon-ish, like maybe 30 seconds, because we're going to do a really fucking weird out of bounds skip here in a second, or we're going to like go through the outside of this lighthouse and then jump through a floor and hopefully not fall to our death. And we're going to do a YOLO jump because this is going to do an auto save midair. No! <laughs> oh, don't tell me it made an auto save as I'm falling to my death. No, it didn't! No! No! Alright, never mind. Alright. Scratch that. We got another minute until time. Gotta do this again. <laughs> yeah, that's the bad part about missing that trick. <laughs> it just makes an autosave as you leave the elevator. But if you're too quick, it'll make the elevator- or sorry. It'll make the autosave as you're jumping out. Meaning if you miss the jump, it'll just be an autosave that just spawns you in imminent death. Right, let's try this again. I'm gonna blink, jump, land, good. Blink here, blink, scroll, pick up key, go past man, and time. Corvo! I knew you'd come. Is it going to be okay now? That was like a 3554 on my live split. What was it in real world time? Uh, so I I it, not sure if I got it right on time. And um, now Emily called around thirty-seven twenty-nine. Take her mother's throne. That's not too bad. After a That's fine. Of turmoil. Just okay. I mean, it was a bit of a cluster <laughs> fuck at the end. Her young mind <laughs> it's fine. That was like two major mess ups, which was like tower and then that level right there. But apart from that, it was all right. It's just all right. You watched and listened when other men would have shouted in rage. So this ending is really weird. No music. Instead of striking. So it is with the <laughs> passing of the plague and Emily's ascension. Have you played this game, Haggy? Comes a golden age. Uh, no, I have always meant to play it, but never picked it up. So. It's a good. It's a good game. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks yeah. for running. Yeah, Any thank you, thank you for having fun. me. Uh, enjoy rest of GDQ or ESA or Hackathon. You know how it goes. And decades hence, <laughs> yep. when your hair turns yeah, white thanks. and you pack.